Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. If you want to be a real pro in my eyes, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And our first story of the day is by Ducky3377. Signaling means I have the right of way. Duh. Minor petty revenge that was his own fault. UK driving, we drive on the left lane here. Read another car related petty revenge and my one happened yesterday and still gives me a little chuckle so I hope it's okay to post. Had a boy racer driving in the opposite lane towards me on a residential road with speed bumps, meaning 20 miles per hour in the UK. Boy racers, usually defined as a young guy driving dangerously. Anyway, guy driving in opposite lane towards me swerved slightly into my lane and thought he had the right of way to cross in front of me because he signaled to show he wanted to go into a side street. I kept going as it was my right of way and thought he would use logic and wait, oh no. He then made the bright decision to continue into my lane, causing us both to slam on the brakes. He then proceeded to shout abuse at me and, Did you not see me signaling right there? I was confused why this idiot thought he had the right of way because he signaled? I had some sort of out of body experience where I stayed calm and lifted my hand to give him the usual two fingers of learn to drive as he's losing his mind at the wheel. He throws his hands up in the air and turns his car off shouting, well now I'm not moving, you know, like a child. I roll my eyes and look next to his car where there's plenty of room for me to drive past, opposite lane mind you, and calmly drove around to carry on with my day. He was raving mad but guess it sucks that he decided to turn his car off as he didn't have time to turn around and do anything about it. If this was you, as you drove off, would you be grateful that they turned their car off so they couldn't just turn around and keep following you? Or would you be hankering for a little bit of round two with this guy? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I don't know if this is like a thing in the UK, but like, is signaling some kind of thing that means you have the right of way? Is that common in any place? I mean, don't get me wrong, signaling is a great thing and people honestly don't signal enough. But I'm sat here wondering how they equate signaling to meaning they have the right of way. Maybe people just need to be put back in driving school so they can understand what signaling actually means, which just means you're signaling to do something. It doesn't mean, all right, yield, I'm doing this thing now. It's supposed to be just like a heads up, right? Our next story is by non-guilty home, paycheck late for a month. So I used to work at a shelter home for kids. My job was mostly night shifts with no social interactions, just making sure the kids sleep well, and cleaning the place. My boss had been postponing my paycheck for a month. I had been sending him emails about it and asking where my money is, and also been calling him, but despite his promise, I didn't get paid. The living room of the place I worked in had fruits and bread that were going old soon, and no one wanted to eat them, so I went on to feast on them that night. I thought it's better than throwing food away. I told myself that getting paid is a given because you gotta eat and it's a human right not to starve. So I started eating without a feeling of guilt at all. There was tons of fresh food in the fridge and freezer downstairs, so I knew there was enough food for everyone despite me eating. When I finally received my paycheck, I resigned from that place. Working nights and not getting paid isn't fair. All other employees said that it's not rare for the paycheck to be late around here. That was the last straw for leaving. Stick to your rights, people. I feel like the only reason why you would keep holding on to a job like that is just because it's a shelter home. More for just helping the kids rather than the fact that you're getting paid at the end of the day because obviously they don't really want to pay you if it's taking a month to get your paycheck. It's sad that you're in an environment like that. They're supposedly getting paid to take care of these people and you yourself have to dig into the food because you're just not getting paid. Our next story is by Chickens1, Water Company with a Heart. I took over my grandfather's water bill when I moved into his house because the water company wanted $500 to switch it into my name. Screw that. I just paid it for 10 years, then I sold the house and moved. I got a final bill of like $300 for switching out the meter the month I moved, something they did on their own and apparently misread the meter, accusing me of using like 100,000 gallons that month. Right. Keep in mind this is all still in grandpa's name. When collections came calling, I told them he moved and gave them the address of the cemetery where he's buried. Last I heard of it, I'm wondering if OP shouldn't feel a little bit worried as far as the legality of what they did, continuing to pay under somebody else's name even though it's not them paying for it. 
I'm not a lawyer and it's not a great sum of money, but I feel like if they wanted to, they might have some kind of legal case there. This next story is by Witch59. Man refuses to move one seat over in crowded movie theater. Apparently, movie theater etiquette, which there's no consensus of what it encompasses, stirs strong passions. I think it also shows how much civility has been lost over the last few decades. 30 years ago, people were shocked that the man wouldn't move over one seat. Today, apparently, they would be shocked if he did. This happened many years ago, but I heard the theme song from the movie just now and the memory came flooding back. I had gone to see a popular movie by myself, got to the theater in plenty of time and sat down. Theater starts to fill up and soon the only available seats are the single seats here and there, including the one next to me. I notice a man one row ahead of me that has an empty seat on either side of him as well as the seat in front of him, so yes, he had a prime seat. A couple come in and they start looking for two seats together. They notice the man in the row in front of mine and his empty seats on either side and politely ask if he would move one seat over so they could sit together. He refused. This rubbed me the wrong way. Granted, I would have hated to lose the luxury of empty seats around me in a crowded theater too, but if I only paid for one seat, I'm only entitled to one seat, so I asked the couple if they would like my seat and the empty seat next to mine, and I would move to a single empty seat. The couple gratefully accepted, and I moved to the seat in front of the entitled patron. I got to be nice to the couple, and petty in the same action. Not bad. Edit number two, I said this happened many years ago. I didn't realize until I decided to look up what year the movie was released that it was 30 years ago. This was before stadium seating, at least where I live, and before one could reserve a specific seat. The movie was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. A number of people think the couple were jerks for asking the man to move over one seat. I don't see how asking him to move over one seat was a jerk move. They asked politely. He said no. They accepted his answer and were standing in the aisle looking around for empty seats when I offered my seat to move. And yes, even if the seat in front of me wasn't opened, I would have offered my seat so the couple could have sat together. I get the guy's plight as well because it's super nice when you go to the theater and you don't have anybody on the left and right side of you. If you're going alone, that is. But like, just be nice, everybody's going to see the movie together. Scoot over a seat and let the couple plop down and enjoy the movie together. You're moving one seat over, nothing's going to change in one seat. Our next story is by Natalie2k8, spreading the work around. So I'm the only one in my unit in the office this week, and I'm having to do the jobs of three other people on top of my own. One of these jobs is the mail job. A coworker I usually like, but who's known for making insensitive comments, failed to stuff and seal her envelopes. I wouldn't mind really, but someone else asked her about it and she said right in front of me that she was spreading the work around. Like I didn't have enough work. Well today I have to pull cases for her to check for quality as part of my regular job, and where I usually pull small cases for her, I choose the biggest this time around. I'm just spreading the work around, you know. This is a case of what goes around comes around. You treat people like dirt, you pass off the heavy lifting for everybody else to do to pick up the slack. Then honestly, you should expect nothing less than the same in return. Pay it forwards by paying it back. Revenge. This next story is by Gimme a High Five. Don't dish out what you can't take. Back in the mid 2000s, we used to play this silly game in basic school, grade school and junior high, in my country. A bunch of us would run around kicking a ball and dribbling one another. Anytime anyone got nutmegged, they'd have to run and touch the nearest block wall or face severe beating. We were stupid 11 or 12 year old kids in a soccer mad nation with too much time and energy on our hands and too little supervision or common sense. So one day while the boys and I were playing, mostly preteen boys, the girls only joined in to chase and beat up the boys. After a few boys including myself fell victim to this outrage, we came up with a plan. We decided to goad the girls into actually playing and running around and kicking the ball by heavily patronizing them and raining compliments upon their shabby soccer skills. It worked and we got a bunch of them to join in. We went easy on them the whole time too so none of them were nutmegged. There was this girl, R, who I noticed was the most vicious of them all. I was one of her victims and I decided to get back at her. I got a few of the boys to target her and we eventually managed to nutmeg her. While she ran for the nearest wall, I tripped her and she fell. We paid back her viciousness with interest for a good few minutes. 
Of course, she cried, but as we'd already written end of term exams and were essentially goofing off every day in school for a good few days before the term officially ended, some of us boys stayed away from school for the next few days, essentially getting a head start in vacation. It made for a nerve-wracking three-week vacation because we were almost sure we'd get punished when school resumed, but it was totally worth it. We didn't get punished for that, in case you're wondering. So for anybody that doesn't know, the term nutmeg is when you kick the ball between somebody else's legs. So trying to nutmeg somebody is literally controlling the ball so well that you can get close to them and basically kick it through their legs or wrap it around their legs. And I don't know about all these rules and punishments and whatnot, I guess I'll just leave that for them to kind of look back on, but I would not be taking part in that. Our next story is by Queen of Moogles. You want to be a noisy neighbor? I have a neighbor in apartments who has no respect for noise at all. He was blasting his music so loud I could hear it across my apartment, not on the shared wall, over my TV playing. I went over and asked him to please turn it down. He told me, it's not quiet hours, so we won't. I said I understand, but I can hear it over my TV away from the shared wall. He pretty much said, that sucks. Also that my car's too close to his parking space and I need to move it. It's not. His apartment also reeked of weed. I went back to my apartment, upset that he refused to have any respect for me. He turned his music up louder. The ball's on this guy. I wrote a fairly lengthy email to my apartment managers, including that he's likely smoking weed in his apartment. That breaks the lease. I then called the non-emergency police line and filed a noise complaint, and they showed up to talk to him, and he was very pissed. Maybe learn to be respectful and I won't call the cops to file a complaint. It ended with him being angry and me cackling. I mean, yeah, that's part of apartment living. If you live in an apartment, you can't just jam the radio as loud as you possibly can. Not unless the person to the left, right, above, and down, if possible, all like the same genre of music or whatever you're listening to. And OP did the right thing. They went over there and they politely asked them, could you please turn it down? I understand you like it loud. And they go, no, I'm going to turn it up. What else can you do? File the complaint? Call the cops. And our final story of the day is by ManB91UK. Same parking lot, same parking space, but a different car. Expecting someone skinny this time, I squeezed my little Mazda in even tighter. They had the decency of tucking in their mirrors. I come back to find a few people stood staring. I laughed and got into my car and started to drive away. The owner of the other car gestured so I pulled up and the following exchange happened. The entitled driver said, learn to drive mate. I said, that's rich, coming from a guy who can't drive forwards into a parking space without messing it up. Maybe you need to learn to stay inside the lines. I drove away giggling. I think it's a pretty universal thing for people to hate anybody that finishes outside of the lines. But sometimes, honestly, I'm willing to overlook it. The thing that I really hate is people who willingly take up multiple parking spaces with their big old trucks or whatnot, or people who legitimately, genuinely park so badly that there's no way you can park next to them. It's like, even if you're not the best driver, how do you mess up that bad? And not only do you mess up that bad, but you don't correct it? You get out of the car, you're like, eh, I'm halfway in the other spot, but whatever. And you just leave it? Sometimes you just don't understand people, but one thing I do understand is that that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.